Hey everybody, this is Brian and welcome to the seventh Dart tutorial. All right, so today we're going to click language and then go back to tour. And what we're going to start today is called classes. Um, you may be sitting in a class watching this video, um, but this is different. So first off, what is a class? If you've never come from any other language, it'll say Dart is an object-oriented language with classes and mixin-based inheritance. What in the heck does that mean? What it really means is a class is a blueprint. From that blueprint, map blueprint, you create an instance of that object. So, let's say you have a house. Well, a house is a abstract concept, right? There's different types of houses that come in all sizes, shapes, colors, rooms, locations. So, a house would be your blueprint. From that, you would instigate or make instances of houses. So you would actually build the houses from those blueprints. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing today. All right, so we're going to create a new project here. And we're going to make sure it's console application in Dart. And let's call this classes one, even though it's really like intro to classes. So while that is just grinding away, calculating the trajectory of everything in the universe, um, what does the mixin based inheritance mean? You'll see this passed around quite a bit. Really what that means is you can have multiple classes and have those classes inherit from each other. For example, you are inherited from your mother and your father. So let's say your mother has red hair and your father has blue eyes. You probably have red hair and blue eyes. Um, actually, I think most redheads have blue eyes anyways. I, when I had hair, I was a redhead, but anyways, um, so let's just dive right in here. So first thing I want to cover is why do we need classes to begin with? We can already put functions in here. So let's just say we want to do void print speak. Whoops. That was just stupid. We want to speak. And then uh, in here we're going to print something, right? And we can call this pretty much from wherever we want, right? We've done this before. And we're going to say, so when we run this, we know absolutely what to expect. It's speaking. But let's say we want to mimic a dog or a cat. Hmm. Then we've got to change this. So let's say string, I don't know what to call this, noise. And then... We're going to add the noise here. And oops, yep, we forgot to add this. So now we want to say, we're going to just imitate a cat here. Meow, why not? And now it's going to meow. But what if we want to do a dog now? Well, okay, I guess we could just do this and then bark instead. But we are now imitating a dog and a cat, but we don't actually have a dog and a cat. What if we want to add things like fur color, eye color, you know, name, things like that? That's where classes really shine. Um, so first thing we're going to do is make a new Dart file. Let's just call it cat.dart. And notice how I put it in the bin file. Um, if you read the official documentation, the lib is actually really for external or public things. So if you want to share that with the rest of the world, where bin is really for your internal program. I may be wrong on that, but that's what I read. And whoops, we don't say void, we say class because we're giving it an actual type. Now this is not a return type, this is a declaration. Notice how it doesn't take any parentheses. It just has these brackets. So there's no parameters here. We will get into that. They're called constructors. We'll get into that into a future tutorial, but right now we're gonna keep it simple here. So now we're gonna say void speak print meow and we're going to just through the magic copy and paste make a new file call this dog and go back to our main file here let's just get rid of these First thing we really need to do is actually import those. So we're going to import, and we're going to import cat.dart, and we're going to import dog.dart. 
thought my phone made a weird noise. I just heard that. Anyways, I dropped my phone and it like the camera case cracked. The phone itself is fine, but I had to order a special part. But now the phone's acting just weird. All right, so now that we have our classes, our blueprints, we have to actually make instances of those objects. So we're going to say cat and I don't know what to call the cat. Let's call him Mr. Twinkles. I have no idea what to name the cat. Equal new cat. So what are we doing here? We've seen something similar. So we're declaring a type, which is actually our class, our blueprint, this guy right here. And then we're saying our variable name, and then we're going to actually assign it a value. We're saying new, new is a keyword, new cat, meaning we're going to take that cat blueprint, make a brand new version of that and hand it to this variable. We could also do this. So now we have two instances of the same blueprint, but they're two different objects. We have an object here and an object here. And we can say, now we have an instance of our dog class. And then we can say, Mr. Twinkles, speak, Fluffy, speak. And we'll say, what do we call him, Fido? speak. Uh, I prefer to do lowercase, but we should, because they're names, I'm kind of weird about that sometimes. So when we run this bad boy, you'll see we have meow meow barks. We've got both cats meowing and dog barking here. So we got a noisy room. Okay, great. But what are we really leveraging here? What, what's the real power of classes? What we can do here is say like bool claws out and with the dog we can say string color So what we have now is our blueprints are different, right? Both of them have a speak, but dog has a color, cat has a claws out. And we can access those through the properties. So let's say Fido, oops, not final, Fido, there we go. And let's just print this bad boy. My spelling skills are much to be desired today. There we go. So you can see we now have brown after bark because we're printing out Fido's color. So that is, in a nutshell, how you would build a class and how you would actually make your blueprint. Now, there's a lot that goes into this. We're going to have to split this up over several videos. And what I want to do now is actually make a bit more of a complex example. And to do that, we're going to kind of abandon the dog cat example. We're going to make a new file and we're going to call it, let's call it house. And in here, we're going to say class house and we're going to make our scope. Now, we're going to make a private variable here. Uh, we're going to say mm, h. And then we're going to make a public variable. Whoops. And then we're just going to make a couple properties that are public here. Like we're going to say int width, int height. Ah, that was my phone. I did hear it. Go away phone, I'm doing a tutorial. And then what is the difference between private and public? Some of you who know other languages understand this, um, but some of you that are new may not. Notice how it has this underscore in the beginning of it. That is how you differentiate between private and public. Private means that only this class inside of this scope can access this variable. Public means 
anything in the class and outside of it can access it. So good example. Let's just import here. I'm just going to say house one equal new house. So if we try to say house one dot and we do that underscore age equal 99 years old, you notice how it is not liking that. It's going to say the setter age is undefined in class house. What does that mean? The setter age. That makes literally no sense. What's going on here? So let's try house one dot width equal, and we'll say this is 100 feet, and house one dot height. Actually, we should have called that length, but actually, let's change that because I want this to actually make sense. And let's say this is 200 feet long. That's kind of a big house. Those take it just fine. So what is this complaining about? Let's just try to run it. And of course, boom, same error. Class house has no instant setter underscore age. It's doing that because we have a scope issue. This is a private variable and we're trying to access it outside of the class. Now, if we're in the class itself, and let's just say, Notice how it suddenly works. That is called scope within the class. Um, you cannot access that outside of this class or the scope. Whenever you see these brackets, think of scope um, because it is private. Private is denoted by that underscore. That is specific to this language, so definitely pay attention to that. In most other languages, you actually write the word public or private in front of the type. Uh, Dart goes away from that whole concept, um, but fear not there is an easy way to set that and we're going to show that right now what we're going to do is a getter and setter so we're going to say you remember the error message that popped out with is there is no setter what, what's a setter well this is a, a concept that sprung up about i want to say 20 some odd years ago um, and we're just going to go over it real quick so when we get something you're, you're taking something right you're saying give it to me so we're going to get, and we're going to say footage. And then we're going to do fat arrow width times length. What have we done here? We're getting a getter. We're getting a getter. We're creating a getter using the get keyword that is an integer type. The variable is called footage. The fat arrow really basically says we're making an anonymous function here. Um, cause it's all one line. We don't have to break this into like, uh, something like this int footage return with times length. Yeah. You, know, you don't, you don't have to do something like that. Um, so we're just going to delete that because it's all one line, right? It's all compact. You can definitely do it the other way, but that's what all this fat error really does. It just condenses it to one line. So we're getting that. And we have this anonymous function here. Or is it inline function? Anonymous versus inline. That always messes me up. So let's get our square footage from this thing. Let's actually delete that so it'll run. And we're going to say print house one. Oops footage. So when we run this, you can see this is a large house. Let's scale that down. That's like, you know, massive house. Let's just say this is a length of uh, 50 feet, actually 25 feet by 60 foot house. Okay. That's more reasonable. That's about a normal house size here. So how is it calculating? How's it getting this footage? Well, back to our our blueprint here, we got our getter, and the getter is saying, hey, whenever you try to access this variable, run this code. And all that's doing is taking our variables width and length and multiplying them and then returning them. Pretty simple. 
But what if we want to actually set something? We want to set the age of the house up here. So let's do that. Now, we have another problem is we can't access that because it's a private variable. That's where getters and setters work in tandem. So we're going to say int get. Hmm. And let's just call this home age. That way. Uh, now let's call this years. That way there's no real real issue between underscore age and age and we're going to say return age and then we're going to set home or I'm sorry years old value I want to give it a type there So what we're really doing is we're saying, okay, when you try to get something out of this, when you're trying to access that, return this, which is actually up here, this private variable. However, when you're trying to set it or save something to, think of a variable as a container, like a little bucket. Remember, a variable is something that will change. The contents of that bucket will change. So when we go to pull something out of that bucket, we're, we're calling get. When we go to put something into the bucket, we're calling set. Think of it in terms of those concepts and it'll make much more sense. Now set and get, you have to have a type here. So we want to get, we want to pull out of that bucket an integer. And set, we want to put into that bucket an integer. And that's how we're actually doing that. So when we go to pull out of the bucket, this will get run. When we go to put into the bucket, this will get run. That's a very confusing concept if you're new to programming. That's why I kind of really wanted to cover it. So we're gonna say house one dot uh, years old equal let's say it's a 10 year old house and then we're going to print house one dot years old let's run this and you can see there's our 10 so here we are calling the setter here we're calling the getter. Uh, getters and setters are important because sometimes you don't want to actually expose your variable to the outside world or you want to control how it's accessed. For example, let's say you want to set this, but yeah, you're running a real estate agency and older houses really are more attractive. So you want to add 10 years to that house. So what we're doing here is a little sneaky, right? Because we're saying house one years old is 10, but under the hood, in the background, we're actually adding 10 years. So it's now 20 years old. So always think of getters and setters as if you're working with a bucket and it'll be much easier in your head. And that's why you need to use them so you can actually isolate um, that variable from the outside world. So that's great and all. Um, what happens if we have multiple homes here? So let's just uh, make a new house. Let's make a couple of them. And let's add a property in here. Call. Oh, we've already got it. Color. And we're going to go back here and we're going to say I want a red house. House two dot color. I want a blue house. And then house three. Hmm. I need a good color. I need like a solid color that's just gonna stand out. Black. You don't see any black houses. I don't know why. Black's a pretty cool color. I think it'd be really trendy to have like a completely black house. I'd buy one. So Back to our trusty list example with generics programming. Remember how we have worked with, I think, strings and integers in the past. See how it says list, and then the little arrows, and then E? That is the template we're going to be working with. And we are going to say we want to use our house class. Notice how, maybe it's not visible, it's got that little C right here. It wasn't too visible when I'm on it, but it's got that C. That denotes it's a class. So we're going to use the class, not an actual variable. And we're going to call this homes equal new list house 
Now that statement that we've worked with in the past makes a little more sense because we know now that list is actually under the hood a class. And this just means it's using generic programming, which we will use in future tutorials. Um, now we're just going to say homes dot for each. And in here we're going to say, whoopsie. I always, come on keyboard, work with me here. There we go. We are just going to do our function. I'm going to say value. And we're going to say print value.color. So really what we're doing here is we're saying make a list. And in that list, we're going to store homes or the house class, that blueprint. And for each of them, we're going to print out the color. And you can see how it is now, hmm, where'd it go? Why did it not do that? There's brown. Print value dot color. Did I screw that up? Hmm. You know, it's been a very long day when you just completely forget to do something. There's nothing in our list. That's why it wasn't working. My brain is totally fried. I have bought a house. I am currently doing a lot of stuff at work, so bear with me if I'm a little scatterbrained sometimes. Home ownership will definitely make you lose your mind. I spent all weekend installing these lights. It should have been the easiest thing in the world. After about a million cuss words, the lights are installed and working though. There we go. So there's our three houses with the three different colors. And in there you can access the other properties and things too, like, you know, footage. Things like that. All right, so that is, in a nutshell, intro to classes. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. We're going to cover these a little more in depth. Uh, be sure to really read up on classes on the official Dart site. And uh, for the source code, go out to my website, voidrums.com, click Tutorials, and there's a link to my GitHub repos. Um, I do have it out here as Flutter Tutorials, and then I have them as submodules in here, and I'll put in the additional submodules. Um, if you're so inclined, if this helped you, definitely consider uh, donating. This site's run 100% off your donations, and I thank you for watching.